Hi everybody, it's Lori with Reiki and Wellness broadcasting from my healing space today for Wellness Wednesday. And today's topic is Reiki Level 3 Master Level and applying mindfulness to our time and energy. Before we get into the topic, I want to go ahead and do our Reiki Level 3 cleansing techniques starting with lemon and eucalyptus spray. You want to spray like all around the periphery of your auric field, taking off anything like uh, far away from your body. And then we're going to use uh, orange oil today with a little bit of spearmint oil because I, I wanted it to be a fresh scent. So this is the spearmint. Combine them. Douse your hands and then comb over your energy field, taking off anything from the day or the week or the month or the season so far. Oh my goodness, that's very, very, very refreshing. I love it. Take a deep breath. And then don't forget your feet. And then we want to go ahead and work on um, a little bit of sound. So we want to use the shakers to clean and cleanse our energy. And act like an energetic scrub for your energy field. And we hold a lot of tension in our heart space, so it's always good to come over your heart space with any kind of sound or musical instrument and just kind of really clear it away. And take it down to your feet for grounding. And then I, um, I was out of town recently and I purchased these Tibetan chimes, so I thought we would use these. singing bowl we'll use that a little bit later on and then we want to open up our energy field using the reiki symbols so we're going to use the shoku rei symbol to start with we want to invite in shoku rei which is the activating symbol for reiki and you want to invite it in through your your crown chakra down through your third eye your throat chakra your heart space your solar plexus, your sacral, your root chakra, and then see it or take it all the way down to your feet. And also just visualize it going into the earth. I think it's very beneficial to send Reiki energy to the earth itself. And then we want to um, call on the Reiki master symbol Domo. So if you really take a good look, you can feel the activation. I was feeling it in my sinuses. So again, just take it down through your um, chakras. Invite it to come in and ground through you. I feel this grounding through my feet already. your legs, through your feet, and into the earth. So you can take Duomo, you can draw this over the earth itself, and you can put it into the earth. But you just want to draw these symbols 
and send them out or bring them in, okay? Or draw a card, it's easier. And then we want to open up our energy field, calling in divine light, divine love, and universal life force energy. So we say divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through me now. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Breathe that in and let it filter through your chakra system also. And then call on divine love and say divine love is doing its perfect work in and through me now. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through us now. And then feel that kind of permeate your chakra system, especially in the heart space. But all the chakras need the love, right? Every chakra needs to feel light and love to balance. And then we call on universal life force energy to zigzag through our chakra and meridian system. And just visualize it coming down through your crown and in through your uh, chakra and meridian system to cleanse and clear anything that's out of balance and harmony. <coughs> and I feel it like activating my throat right now. Kind of absorb that too and then allow it to filter through your chakra system, go through your legs, through your feet, and into the earth. Okay, so um, I took a break. You may have noticed. Um, I thought it would be a couple weeks and it turned out to be, I think, maybe four weeks that I haven't filmed a video. So I apologize for the delay. I just actually needed some extra time once I got back from my trip and um, I had like a new work schedule and things that had to be taken care of. So I hope to be back on a regular basis, but I do have some other events coming up this um, spring and into the summer that I might have to do some in intermittent uh, videos. So just bear with me as I kind of like, I'll try to put out as many as I can, but um, Usually I try to do the Wellness Wednesday video. If I don't do it one week, I'll try to just get to it the next week, okay? And um, thank you for everyone who's been liking and subscribing and joining the channel. It means a lot to see the channel growing. And um, I hope that you're getting something good out of this. That's the intention. And the intention is truly to empower you to be the best you can be and to fill yourself with all the good energy that you can hold and take it out into the world. So that's the idea behind all the exercises with the Reiki is you're giving yourself a self Reiki treatment using the essential oils, using sound, using symbols, visualizing. Um, and then once you fill yourself with all this good energy, wherever you go, you emanate that to others, right? So you're activating, you know, a lot of things when you go out into the world. So it's good to come in with good, clean energy, high vibrational energy, and it makes you feel better, right? So there's only upsides to doing this, nothing, no downside. Um, but um, that being said, I just hope like you do follow along and, you know, with the demonstrations and try to follow along and do it for yourself at least once a week because you will feel a big difference if you do that and um, if you can do it every day that's even better um, doing something every day is good even just the sound healing you know sound is um, sound is very interesting so it travels like through time and space. And so it can unclog some energies that are stuck. So if you can use sound or music or anything um, organic with sound, like an instrument, um, it, that'll help you too. So just whatever you can do to just raise your vibration and to put good energy into the world. That's basically the intention of this channel. And then we talk about something that hopefully will relate to a core issue or a root issue that you might want to think about or think about addressing and how to do that. So um, 
the topic today is how to use time and energy mindfully. And to me, this is like the most important thing I could ever talk about, right? So the way we use our time and our energy is super, super, super important. And I don't think enough people really um, value these two things enough, right? So we give a lot of our time and energy away to work and to family and to obligations, and we don't take enough time for ourselves typically, right? And, um, and then our energy becomes depleted. So the way we manage our time and energy is super critical to how we can show up in the world not only for other people, but for ourselves. And I find that the more you can show up for yourself, then you can show up better for other people. And society kind of has it backwards. So we've been trained or conditioned to show up for other people before ourselves and then to give ourselves like whatever's left over, right? So I think that's backwards. So I would encourage that we flip it over and we start to treat ourselves, you know, very in a very sacred manner and that we are super valuable to everybody that we affect everywhere we go, right? So if we think about our ourselves as a sacred vessel going into the world, that helps reframe all of our time and energy. And then you think about like, okay, so if I am a sacred vessel walking through the world, you know, spreading love and light and positive energy, how should I treat myself so I can continue to do that, right? And I think that's a good position to reframe how you spend your time and energy from because then, you know, you're not going to waste as much of it, right? And, you know, not to get into everything, but like we only have so much time and we only have so much energy and the way we allocate that, it becomes more important the older we get. But I think if you start out at a younger age and treat every interaction as important and every um, restful period as important and how you spend your time and who you spend your time with, if you treat all of that stuff as meaningful and sacred, you're going to get more out of your whole life the earlier you start doing that, right? So I think a lot of times we waste time and we spend time with people that maybe don't care about us or don't regard us as much as they should. And we waste a lot of time and energy in those relationships when we could just pull our energy back, give more to ourselves, and kind of regroup and then go out into the world and, and ask ourselves, like, do these relationships mean something to me? Do I find fulfillment in these interactions? Is this working for how I want to feel every day of my life? Are these people the people I really want to surround myself with? Is this the job I really want to show up to every day? Um, you know, and start asking yourself questions, like with every interaction, like, is this working for me? Do I feel fulfilled by this? Do I feel like people are appreciating me? You know, and just kind of like when you look at every place in your life and every person in your life and how you spend your time and who you spend your time with, if you ask yourself some of those questions as you're engaging with them, you might shape your life a little bit differently if the answer is no, right? So if you ask yourself, is the job of I'm doing fulfilling and do I feel appreciated? Just those two questions. Is what I'm doing fulfilling and do I feel appreciated? If you have to say no to both of those questions, you're probably not in the right job, right? And same with a career, like you could have invested a lot of education and time and energy into the career. And if you can't answer yes to both of those questions, you're in the wrong career, right? So I think it's good to start paring things down and simplifying and readjusting our perspective because our biggest commodity, our, our biggest value system is our time and our energy. And the way we allocate our time and our energy matters the most for, for everything we do. I would add health to that, time, energy, and health, right? So people focus a lot on money, and money's, you know, good, but it's not 
our most valuable resource. So time, money, and health are the three most valuable resources that we possess, right? So going through your life and going through the people in your life and just saying, does this relationship bring as much as, you know, I'm giving to the relationship? Do I get that much back, right? And going person to person throughout your life and asking these questions, like, am I getting as much as I'm giving? Does this feel good? Do I enjoy this? Am I, <laughs> am I enjoying these people? I mean, I feel like I spent a lot of time in my youth just hanging out with people that didn't matter, right? I spent a lot of time with superficial, extraneous people that I probably could have used my energy a lot more wisely when I was younger. And I think that's kind of the case when you are young that you're just socializing with people in general and kind of learning like what you like and what you don't like. And that's part of the process. But now that I'm older, now that I'm wiser, I just see like every exchange I have as I'm giving you the currency of my time and my energy. Am I getting anything back from that? Am I, is this fulfilling? Do I enjoy this? And, you know, sometimes there's still some no's in there, but mostly it's a yes, right? So I try to allocate all my time and all my energy in places where I get a yes back. And if it feels a little off or a little funky, it usually is. And I usually have to make some adjustments if I feel that way. But I got to say, like, I've streamlined things enough in my life where I don't have that issue anymore. I don't feel like I'm wasting time and I don't feel like I'm wasting energy. And I don't feel like I don't think I have any relationships in my life that I don't enjoy at some level right so I there's some that are you know obviously better than others but overall in general I've tightened it up a lot but I've also had to eliminate a lot to get to that place right so I don't do a lot of extra things unless it's intentional and there's a reason behind it like I just went on a, um, a vacation and I spent a lot of time socializing but that was super intentional, super meaningful. I concentrated a lot of visits into a, a short period of time because I don't get to go out to my home state that often. And every, every single interaction was like, you know, time and energy and value and meaning. And I put a lot of like, I cram a lot of goodness into each uh, visit, right? So I, you know, manage my time in a certain way so I would get the most out of it and give the most that I could while I was there. And, you know, unfortunately, I have to do it very intensely like that when I visit now because I don't know when I'm going to get back again. I don't know who's going to be there when I get back. <laughs> I lost an aunt last year. I've lost, you know, tons and tons of relatives already. And I want every moment to count right every moment that I can make count I try to make those count and I'm very intentional and very mindful about it now because of you know losing people but also just like getting older and realizing like you have to make the most of these opportunities otherwise you don't know when or if you're going to get them again right and I still try to do that, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Like I try, like my son, I don't see him that often anymore. So I make him stop and say hello to me, like at least once or twice a day. And I, I tell him, I'm like, I have to see your face. I, you know, he'll like walk by me and he'll try not to see me all day. And I'm like, no, you need to stop. I need to like take a mental picture of you today. And every day I try to do that and I have to stop him and I have to rein him in and I have to say, no, I need to see your face. So I, you know, I'm trying to grab onto a little bit of time and energy from him too before he, you know, goes off to college and stuff. So pretty much like I'm making the most of every moment that I have with anybody that matters to me and truthfully everybody matters to me right so I try to like have an engagement with every single person that I meet and if it feels off I try to correct it and I try to put a lot of mindfulness into every 
encounter, every engagement, and I treat everybody like I might not see them again, right? Most, for the most part. And I treat each interaction like, hey, this is a special moment. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad we have it. Even I just ran into somebody at the grocery store yesterday and I was like, oh my God, I haven't seen this person in a long time. And, you know, I made the most of the opportunity and it was just, you know, very random. But I did that and that's important, I think. Like, I don't know when I'll see that person again. I don't know if I'll see that person again, right? So that was my moment to make something out of that, right? So being intentional and being mindful about our time and energy and how we interact with people I think becomes very crucial over your life and people feel it, right? I think people feel it when you're paying attention to them, when you're be interacting with them, when you're, you know, taking, taking the opportunity to make the most of the, that situation, right? So I just, I don't know. It's like a, on the top of mind for me, um, especially like going back home and seeing people and I, you know, then I always miss them. Right. So I'm always like, Oh, I can't wait to get back and see you guys again. Um, you know, and then I do things throughout the year. I like send photos or I call or I text or I send, send what I can. And I stay in touch with people because that, you know, builds a bridge to the next time I see them. Right. So I've lived far away from home for like 20 some years. So I learned to do that because like if I'm just randomly showing up once a year, that's not going to have as much of an effect as if there's a bridge to the time that I see them next. Right. So I try to build a bridge to seeing my friends and family till the next time. Right. And then they know they have a bridge to come back to me if they need anything. And and we keep the lines of communication open and we have this bridge where there's you know, contact. Um, so I don't know, that's just something that I think is really valuable, but the sooner you can get into that, the better, right? So I, I think I learned this pretty early because I did lose my dad when I was 21 years old and I valued my time and time itself from a very early age. So I, in that sense, I was lucky that I got that lesson really early, but then there was also times I wasted time. I wasted energy, you know, I'm just like every other person. Um, and now I just really try not to right now. I just really try not to. And I don't think resting is a waste. I think resting is recuperation and it's good for your health and it's good for your vitality and it regenerates your energy system and it gives you more creative power actually. So resting is very healthy for you. Um, so I don't see resting as wasting time. Um, but sometimes I do, I, I get a little anxious. I'm like, okay, I can't just be sitting around all day. I have to go do something. So I do get a little bit anxious about that because I don't like to waste too much time. And if I feel good, I want to go do something or I want to do something with that energy that I have, right? So I want to be useful with that time and useful with that energy, right? So just maybe reflect on this a little bit and think about the people in your life and who you enjoy being around, who you enjoy being around less. And you can diminish, some people you can't eliminate, but you can diminish how much time you spend with them and you can allocate more time to those that you want to spend more time with, you know, and you can just kind of flip it around, but treat it like a commodity because it is, it's a valuable commodity to have time and energy and health. Those are your biggest commodities. So the way you spend all of that, treat it like currency, treat it like, you know, divide it up and say, okay, I only have so much of this. So let me put the most where it matters most and the least where it matters least and just be very mindful about how you do it. And then, you know, assessing your job and your career, please make sure you're spending most of your time. That's where you spend most of your time. Please make sure that you're doing what you care about, right? If it's something that you're good at and you care about it and you feel fulfilled by it and you enjoy it and you know, all of that, that's great. That's a great use of your, all your time, right? But if you're feeling drained and 
stuck and frustrated and um, underappreciated, undervalued, all of that, that's, it's time to make a change, right? And you can always make a change and you can always go somewhere. And I wouldn't say look to everyone else to validate you. Try to do something that you would do for free, right? So that's how I try to do any job that I take is would I do this for free? If, if the answer is yes, then that's probably a good thing because I would probably, you know, you get a as much back as you give. So if you give because you enjoy giving, then you're going to get all of that back. And then the paycheck is whatever the paycheck is, right? And if the company's, you know, okay, but not great, you're still going to feel like you're doing something that you enjoy and that means something and has value for you, right? So if you're doing it because you enjoy that kind of work, then that is the best place to be and not to look for too much external validation. But that's a whole topic for another time. But anyway, that's the general uh, message for today. We're going to close out with the OM symbol for unification. We want to invite this into our energy field. Bring it all the way down through your legs, your feet, and into the earth. We're going into the earth, and then we'll close out with the singing bowl. Okay, so thank you for joining me for Wellness Wednesday. I appreciate your time and your energy and how you're spending it with me for these videos. So thank you for that. And I'll see you next time. Take care.